Hi everybody, I'm Brad. I'm Krista. From the Big Family Homestead, and today we're talking on a subject that you don't see a lot, um, well, pretty much I haven't seen much no. on YouTube about, and that is um, homesteading or off-gridding, more self-reliant mm -hmm. lifestyles with a special needs child. Yep. So let's get to it. Now, we have a daughter named Grace who is a very, very stubborn yes now stubborn she takes after her dad oh <laughs> don't be cruel uh, she's 12 years old now but when she was born she was born a preemie and by preemie I mean preemie mm -hmm. a pound and 15 ounces yep. and um, she's got cerebral palsy and some other developmental issues in terms of bone growth mm -hmm. and um, she cannot use her mouth to eat not so like she's, a normal person, no. So yeah. she's fed with a G-tube, mm -hmm. and uh, it really got us to thinking, you know, when you're talking about a homesteading lifestyle or an off-grid lifestyle, more self-reliant kind of thing, there's some serious challenges that you face and uh, ones that you need to absolutely address yeah. before you're in this situation. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to talk a little bit today on some different things and we've got a list here so so we don't forget yeah and also <laughs> too guys if there's something that um you feel like we left out of the conversation please put them in the comments below understand this is just part one and also understand that we realize that every person's situation is different is, is different totally different yeah, yeah uh, one kid's uh, a disability may be needing to have electricity for monitoring machines or it, it just may be different so don't think of this as an all-inclusive thing think of this more of like an overview of stuff you need to think about right and stuff that we've encountered um, so basically let's go ahead and start out mama why don't you talk about the challenges we face well, uh, in our specific situation with Grace. Right. Well, Grace is G-tube fed, which means she has a, it's called a Mickey button that goes from the outside of her body to her stomach, and that's how we Directly her. in. Directly into her stomach, and she can only have liquid. So currently, she gets um, Pediasure. Um, and whatever you so, grind up and make for. Right, right. She also gets goat's milk with um, some extra calories added to it. Um, so it's, it's challenging to make sure she gets the right amount of calories so that she's growing, she's not losing weight, and so, and so that she stays healthy. Yeah, and there was a time when um, we made all, all of, of her food. food. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, is that we really want to get back to that, but it's very, very costly. It's very expensive, yeah. Because when you're talking, um, you know, we grow a lot of our own foods mm -hmm. here on the homestead, but the issues are you can't get them year round. Right. And uh, stuff like, you know, making sure, I mean, you almost have to be, uh, you know, what do they call those? The, the people that do the health um, uh, shoot, really? dietitians. Oh, yeah, you have to really be a nutritionist. That's what it yeah, is. Yeah, because you want to make sure that they're getting all of the nutrition that they need. And so you're going like, okay, I need eight leaves of spinach, and I need uh, two eggs, and I need this. And then it all gets ground into this frothy... It you know, good thing she, she doesn't have to taste it. It looks really gross and smells really gross, but it has all of the proper vitamins and, and calories and all of the stuff that she really needs. Yeah, and so for us, that is one issue that we face mm -hmm. as we become more and more leaning towards the off-grid lifestyle. Those things are going to have to be addressed even more. Right. Um, we currently grow wheatgrass, which we're going to implement mm -hmm. into her diet. Yeah. And uh, talk about goat's milk. Goat's milk is super, super healthy, especially when it's raw. Um, it has about 170 calories per eight ounces. So it's not as much as the Pediasure she gets um, the rest of the day. Um, it's just. It digests easier. It's just and you can feed uh, goat's milk to babies mm -hmm. if mom if can't mom lactate. Can't, right. If mom can't nurse, then goat's milk is your best alternative. Yeah. Now, other things that are in our personal situation that are considerations are um, access to medical doctors. Right. And this is something that you'll have to consider for yourself, depending on your kid's special needs. Um, just to give you an idea, when she was born. 
She spent months and months and months in the NICU. Yeah. And that was very, very difficult on us. And then when we finally got home and got you know, under the uh, watchful eye of all of the doctors and we knew what we were doing and they sent us home with, uh, one was, what was the heart machine? Well, it's a heart monitor. And then the other one was? Oh, um, for? Um, the breathing. I can't remember. <laughs> they were very, totally very important machines. Uh, and, um, think of it well, way. and the thing is this, is that we had, um, uh, we lived in Florida at the time and, had, and my mom and dad had given us uh, passes to Disney World just to kind of go and vent and you know just chill out. So we've got the baby and we've got all these machines and uh, very first night, like 11 o'clock, beep, the machine goes off. You're freaking out. You're going oh, and yeah, checking because yeah. there's leads all over the baby and it's just nuts. And it turns out that the machine itself was broken. Yeah. It had just literally Stopped broken yeah. so what do you do in a situation like that stay up all night oh, yeah. <laughs> you stay up all don't, night and you, you sit there with the baby and, and you watch the baby and so that's kind of what i'm getting at with this specific thing is mm -hmm. um, access to equipment access to doctors how close are you going to need to be by i mean if if the child's disability is one that is just more ambulatory like they have a hard time getting around you might be able to get away with being a little further away from emergency rooms and um, doctors but for us it was not even an option no we had to be really close and we were still 45 minutes away from the children's hospital yeah so yeah any, it, it, it's an apnea machine apnea <laughs> sleep apnea that's right Yeah, she had that because she would just she would breathe so shallow that she had to be on an apnea machine to make sure that she was still breathing. So. Yeah, and, and again, understanding that your situation is gonna be different than the next person's situation. Yeah. But one of the things for us was that we had to get absolutely down and dirty, hands-on involved okay. in every aspect of care for this child. We couldn't just go, well, the doctor will do it. No. Mm -mm. We, and there was, okay, there was a time when we had our next child after Grace. Um, and I'm in the hospital. I had just had a C-section and Brad's at home with the rest of the children at night. And oops, Grace's G-tube fell out. She was messing with her clothes yeah, and, and literally pulled, pulled the whole out. thing out. And he calls, okay, what do I do? You have three options. Bring her to me, take her to the emergency room or do it yourself. He did it himself. I was so proud of him. He did such a great job in staying calm, <laughs> and keeping her calm. Calm. She already knew that, okay, this is not gonna be comfortable. And she tightens up her stomach and then it causes more pain because she's tightened up her stomach and she just had to relax. And I, I, I will admit, I was kind of freaking out uh, <laughs> because, I mean, this is, you go to school to do this, right? But this is part of the point, is that you need to get hands-on involved in these this kind of care with your kids, especially if you're thinking about a more self-reliant lifestyle, something off-grid, something homesteading. You may not have the luxury of, okay, wait, let's go and deal with this tomorrow. You may not. And for us, that G-tube had to get back in there and it had to get back in there now. And so I had to do it, even though I was uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it ended up working out. So for us, the G-tube is an absolute... Um, well, it's, it's, we have to be as well versed in it as we can. We've had to become nutritionists to a large degree. Yep. Because um, the food that they, that they give us, that the doctors give us, is pretty much like milkshakes. And well, and it's it's all it's all dead. There's nothing living in it. Mm -hmm. And that's that. She, I gotta tell you, she's she gets so sick when she has just that food all day long, twenty four seven, seven Starts days a week. Pale. She gets very pale. There's there's no life going into her. And that's why we implemented the goat's milk at least once a day. I mean, I tried to do it all day, but her. She started losing a couple of pounds, and that just, you can't eat. She's she, already thin she's as a rail. She's already small enough as it is. She can't lose any weight. So we had to bring back the Pediasure, and it's just. Well, and that's one of our challenges. Mm -hmm. um, another challenge for us, uh, just looking at our notes here, medical supplies, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, here's the thing, um, being that our Grace, 
uh, has uh, a misshapen roof of arch in her mouth because when she was intubated as a baby, it formed like this instead of a nice round arch. Well, that means she can't get suction to swallow things. So if she tries to swallow stuff, she aspirates stuff. So, which means small particles of whatever she's lungs. swallowing goes into her lungs and causes causes an infection, and she gets pneumonia. Yeah, very and so quickly. going to that point, you know, having access to all these supplies and yeah. stuff, because sure. she she got pneumonia how many times since we've lived here? Well, just last year, four. Just last year. Yeah, another reason why we pulled her out of the school system to yeah. homeschool her. Well, and yeah, homeschooling helps a lot because you're not around all of the other icky nastiness, and that's only one of the many yeah. awesome aspects. But for <laughs> us, being more than, say, an hour and a half away from a children's hospital would be very, very difficult to do right. and justify because you're talking about a lot of risk for, mm, I don't know. It's yeah. kind of up to you there now. Um, other stuff, Mama. Well, you just need to have extra supplies on hand. You need to have extra G tubes, um, uh, extra. Uh, there's an extension that hooks onto her G tube so that we can give her her food. Um, but whatever your situation whatever may your be, whatever situation it is, you need to have extras of those supplies in case you can't get uh, those supplies from a drugstore or or the doctor's office. You have to have extras. Absolutely, and taking a slight turn just for more of a preparedness mm -hmm. kind of tact when we're talking about all this kind of stuff. The reality, folks, is whether there's going to be some kind of crisis, like a natural disaster, or something much worse, like uh, an economic problem, mm -hmm. the reality is we live in a world that these things happen. Yeah. And, um, if all of a sudden you couldn't go to the grocery store and pick up things for two weeks, well, that's that's one thing when you're talking about normal, healthy people. Right. What happens when you're dealing with a special needs kid? And so you really, if you're if you're in in the mindset that I need to make sure that I have enough prepared in the event of X, Y, and Z, right. you have to sit down with a pen and paper and figure out what you're gonna need for your special needs kid, and then Murphy's Law, make it times two, times 10, right. whatever it is, because if you could not restock G-tubes, yeah. how are you gonna feed the kid? How right. are you gonna, for in our case, yeah. whatever your case may be, get your hands on all those supplies, get more of them, just like you would if you were storing up some long-term storable food, and then just rotate it, just the same way you would medical right. supply, or food. Right. Right, you gotta, you have to be prepared for that. For any, I mean, what if there's a snowstorm and you run out of syringes? How are you gonna feed her? I mean, it's, it's you have to be prepared for any situation. So ultimately, take a look at your situation and look at where you want to go. If you're saying I want to go to a self-reliant life where I still have access to hospitals and doctors and this, this and that. Well, that means I can only go X distance away from those places. Right. That means I can only do X this, X that. Um, but now if you're thinking you wanna go a little further down the path, maybe a little more rural, you've got to sit and weigh out your options. What am I gonna need to have on hand? What skills do I have to employ right. Right. for my own situation so that I'm not endangering a special needs kid? Right, right. So do your planning, sit down, write out a list. What, what is it that we need? Okay, now what is our, you know, how far can we be away? Can we be away from more than a week? You know, and all of those things, like if you're, if you're dealing with an off-grid situation where you're relying on solar power, but your special need requires electricity to power a machine that you need, well, that might require more preps, maybe right. a battery gener or a, a gas power generator or something else. Uh, but sit down, take the time, look at your own specific situation because it's gonna be different than everybody else's. Mm -hmm. This was just, uh, hopefully this video was helpful to you. Um, it was just an exercise in, okay, this is where we're at. Right. This is what we've done. Hopefully you can go, oh wow, I need to do a little planning. I need to do a little this, right. yada, yada. Well, and if there's things that that we didn't think of, that you guys think write of, them down. please write them down in the comments. That That is extremely helpful to us. Absolutely. Because so, so, we, don't, we don't know it all. So. You, we don't know it all. She's, she's, that's not true. She's, she's always telling me she knows it all. 
He's full of crap. That is, I'm just teasing <laughs> you, baby. So anyway, I'm Brad. I'm Krista. And uh, this is the Big Family Homestead channel. If you like, like the video or found it helpful, please subscribe. Mm -hmm. Pass it around. Hopefully it'll help some other folks too. You guys have? An amazing day. An amazing day. <laughs>